spectacular badminton mad part of the world. This uh, gymnasium, in fact, right on the back of uh, where the Guangzhou football team play as well. And the other night, there was plenty coming out from there. But it's been a packed auditorium today, and we've witnessed some terrific quarterfinals and more coming your way here on day five of these 2013 World Championships. So this is what we've got in store for you, starting off with a men's singles match as Nguyen and Jorgensen look to book their first time ever in a men's singles semi-final. Of course, Lee Chong-Wei has been there many times before, though he has lost out in these championships to Indonesian opposition. Tommy Sugiato is his cont contestant he has to face this evening. Carolina Marin, what a story for her, up against the young Thai Rachanok Intanan. Then Peterson and Yul in the women's doubles up against Bao Zhang. Plenty of local support for the number seven seeds. And then the men's doubles, Pratama and Suputra against the Danes, Bo and Mogensen. So a terrific lineup for you on court one. People starting to fill this gymnasium now. It's far from capacity, of course. We had a mid-session interval, so many went out and grabbed a bite to eat. We're right in the heart of the city here. And just awaiting now the arrival of the match officials and then our first two players. Which are, as it says, the number seven and the number nine seeds. Nguyen Tien Mun and Jan Jorgensen of Denmark. The court officials are arriving on court. Eric Desroches of Canada and Fine C. Dathan of India. The umpire, Eric Desroches, Canada. It's been a terrific atmosphere inside the arena. In some, in some respects, it's a shame that we had the, the cutoff point, but uh, you can understand it's a long day for the officials and the crowd to be here for non-stop nine ten hours of uh, badminton action all straight games we had as well earlier today in the uh, five matches we had on court no big shocks yesterday of course they were coming thick and fast i'm richard kaufman jill clark alongside me and uh, jill already the the shape up if you like of where the medals are heading now is coming to the fore it has been the odd surprise but for for these two gentlemen here coming out now Nguyen Tien Min of Vietnam and for Jano Jorgensen of, of Denmark what an opportunity to reach their first semi-finals in the world championships Absolutely, and both will believe that wholeheartedly. That's the thing. They, uh, you know, if you come onto court and you've got to play against Lee Chong Wei or maybe even Lin Dan, you know, players come on with the, oh well, I'll give it my best shot. But both of them know they have a real, real chance of beating the other, and therefore this this should be a very tense affair. And I think that uh, both these players. Um, Probably regard this as the biggest match of their lives. Yeah, because the medal is up for grabs and a meeting with the defending champion. You mentioned him there, and there. that's who one of these players will meet. And both of them have been involved in some kind of up and down three set thrillers as well in the build up to this match. Jano Jorgensen has had his up and downs, and you can say the same about Nguyen as well. Yes, I think. Uh, Tian Min Yun, it was really only his third round match against Pablo Abelona from uh, Spain where he dropped uh, the opening game. Apart from that, I mean, he's uh, looked fairly comfortable, whereas Jan Jorgensen, all three of his matches so far have gone the full distance. So, you know, whether that's taken a physical toll, I don't know. They're both probably two of the fittest players in the men's game, so... Yeah, I, I, I think it's less personal opinion, Joe, is less the physical aspect, but the mental aspect, because to me, Jan Jorgensen seems the kind of player who can, who can wobble during matches, and depending how his opponent reacts here, we're looking at Nguyen, 
who's uh, ranked number seven in the world right now. If, if there is a wobble, he can make the most of that wobble from Jorgensen, then he's got a good chance of maybe ramming home an advantage. Yes, uh, but, but both will believe exactly the same thing. So, you know, uh, as far as uh, Jorgensen is concerned, I suppose the fact that he's been pushed the, the whole way in his previous matches and come through, True, yeah. he will believe, well, you know, OK, I might have a little wobble in this one as well, but I'm, I'm going to manage to come through because I know I'm on, in good form. Well, his third World Championships, third time, lucky he hopes. They have met, as you can see, on a number of occasions, seven times. Nguyen has a 5-2 lead, but Jan has won two of the last three clashes that they had. Uh, the last one, you can see, went to the Vietnamese player 21-19, uh, 21-16 in uh, Indonesia, just over a year ago last June. So I'm not sure how much to read into those... Uh, previous clashes and of course none of them have been as big a stage as this one no i i'm not sure we can really read too much into that i think that um since the retirement of peter gader i think this man we're looking at at the moment jan jorgensen uh has taken on the role as the leading danish player and i think he's actually grown in stature because of it i think the fact that he always played second fiddle really to uh, peter gader almost prevented him sort of really believing in himself that he was a star in his own right so i think he's become a much better player over the last 12 months well denmark of course have medaled in the men's singles before peter gave he mentioned uh, morton frost and the uh, bwf president poor uh, eric koya is uh jan jorgensen gonna follow them into those books or i'll be now i'm gonna get one Finals of the men's singles, and a wonderful opportunity awaits one of these two. <laughs> Vietnam, of course, uh, have never won a medal in the World Championships before. <laughs> Thirty years of age, and you wonder whether. Newton will have a, a better opportunity than the one he has in front of him right now. start from you but uh, having watched Jan Jorgensen in his previous two rounds I'm not gonna read too much into any kind of start to this match in one match he started well and then faded before coming good and the other one he started poorly and then came good It does concern me a little bit, though, Richard, the fact that the Dane has been on court for an hour and 11 minutes longer over the three matches played so far. That's just long. 
And that's the side of court he was struggling a little bit yesterday against Bunsak Ponsana. It was that kind of length shot that he was missing in pretty much identical circumstances, missing it by that amount. I mean, on, on almost double figures count. And uh, the fact that the first one of that length that he's tried has gone long as well, and eight of the nine points so far have gone to Nyoin. shot wasn't it from Jorgensen incredibly we saw one of those <laughs> earlier today the Lin Dan uh, Chen Long match where the, the shuttle actually just stuck on the net have you seen that before I have actually yeah. yes I've never seen it before very rare occurrence there good defense and it's gone long Four, eight. I know our colleague Steen Peterson reckons this man we're looking at, Tianmin Yuan, is probably one of the fastest men in the game of badminton. His retrieving capabilities are absolutely extraordinary, and he will run and run and run all day long, but then so will Jorgensen. And to me, Richard, I think one of the big differences between these two men is that Jorgensen actually has a wider repertoire of shots. He has some very, very good skills, whereas I feel this man relies too heavily on his fitness and i think that in the last year or so that um Nguyen may have lost some of his incredible pace he's still very quick but when you rely very heavily on your pace if it drops just slightly it can have a dramatic effect on your overall performance well he has had a, a number of what he calls niggling injuries so yeah. you get those niggling injuries and suddenly you're not able to spring around as much he is actually, I wouldn't say at the peak of his fitness, but he is feeling fit at the moment. The fact that he won his last tournament, the US Open uh, Grand Prix event, that shows that uh, confidence must be up. And the fact that he's in the quarterfinals now, the World Championships helps. At the interval, he has a pretty decisive lead as well. 11 points to four. And he is very experienced. It's not just these 30 years of age this is his seventh world championships and you know he's he's led vietnam as far as badminton is concerned for many years now he's been their only real realistic chance in regular tournament play and now vietnam has followed him a lot of the players and the development of the game in Vietnam has been extraordinary I've seen some very very good players now coming out of that country but it's all been because of this man basically yeah you need a trailblazer don't you yeah and, and how magnificent would it be for him if he was to actually come away win this match and pick up a medal whatever yeah. the color yeah going the right way about it as well well, four. Into the quarterfinals before, in fact, the last World Championships. Peter Gader, another Dane, was the man he took on and lost in three sets. And of course, in London. Hitting the lines. Yes, crikey. Well, four. I can remember back in 2004, Nguyen was named as one of Vietnam's news agency top 10 athletes of the year. So, you know, you're going back nine years and he was a superstar in his home country then. If he was to medal at a world championship, can you imagine what that would do for sport in his country, not just for badminton? Mm, just the point before when Jorgensen was waiting. He was very pensive, a little bit confused and dazed by what's happening here. 
you know, you, you obviously you plan for the match and how you'd like it to to go and you know, well maybe it might be in an awkward situation, but you don't expect to be 14-4 down, do you? No. This game might be on reach now already. 14-4, but needs to show some resistance here, doesn't he, in these last throws of this opening game. Yes, he, he needs to build his confidence has to settle himself down at the moment you're right you used the word pensive I think uh, looks a little bit jittery as well before the evening session got underway he was out on this court practicing with one of the Danish players and you know I thought well I don't often see Jan Jorgensen doing that that bothered me normally he's in the background he's in the practice hall he's doing his stretching and the fact that he felt the need to be out here and hitting on the actual court showed me he was nervous but understandable it's yeah. a quarterfinal of the world championship well it's a, a rare point for Jorgensen There's a couple in a row. He had lost eight in a row before that. between the two men one shaking his head the other having a little smile to himself knows he was lucky to get away with that Tianlin Yuan it really in terms of mm. creativity but obviously it was called out and was out I thought on my look that it was in just long again from Jorgensen giving himself a talking to right now, the Dane. and completely missed time this attacking shot. What? Oh, service for called again. Goodness me. And that brings up 13 game points. Yep, 13 of them. I think this reaction to the service fault's more about the full 11 minutes rather than the actual call itself. It's going wide. Yeah, the umpire is absolutely correct though because what he was saying is the service judge has given a signal to say why it was a fault and therefore you don't need to speak to the service judge. It's become a habit of players. Yeah. It's a lovely way to end the game. It was a super touch from... Uh, and uh, he has been top-notch 
You can't say the same about Jan Jorgensen, who, uh, if he's not careful in the blink of an eye, could be uh, about to lose his medal chances. But this is Jan Jorgensen, and uh, at these World Championships so far, he's made a habit of three gamers, and he will be at his favoured end in the next set. We shall see whether it makes a difference, because that was a one-sided affair. chat in the ear of uh, Jorgensen. Too much to new and do that at the moment. I mean, what? What? I mean, it's all about him playing better, isn't it? This second game to give himself a chance. It's, is it? Or was it tactical? Or? No. First and foremost, I hope Lars Uar has said something to try and calm this man down because it was quite seconds, clear to me from his body language, seconds. it's not a problem to Jorgensen to lose a game. It's the manner in which he lost the game, and he's livid with himself. He's so angry that he didn't Same really game. give a good performance. Oh. So, first of all, he's got to calm down. He's got to play himself in. He needs a couple of, of good long rallies. That's not going to help at all. Well, he thought he was going out, I think, for a minute. And yeah, but he was hesitant in the shot, wasn't he? He was hesitant, Richard. But the, the point is, if you're hesitating, why then go for the winner? Get rid of the shuffle. You're playing against the wind. Get it to, uh, OK, uh, indecision. Get rid of it, let's start the rally again. Hit to the back of the court, and in essence, you're giving yourself time to get back to your base position and regroup. Crew. Regroup. Yeah, yeah, no. You're right, but he's obviously, he's not thinking straight. No. And you can see he's so uptight. You know, and I feel for the man. I know what it's like. You know, but how do you get out of it? It's it's a couple, couple of really long rallies will really help him. Well, it's a new set. You start afresh, back to zero zero. This is opportunity to have a different mindset. the four corners. Himself is having to think now. Oof, that was close, wasn't it? Mm. Oh my goodness. Fuming. Yeah. Absolutely fuming. The problem is, I'm, I'm not sure that um, 
you know, whether the, the service judge is right or wrong is almost by the by. The fact is, I know you called Jan Jorgensen's match last night. Well, the umpire just saying, don't do anything else other than I said, which is just look at the service judge. He's giving you a signal. You don't need to talk to him. The, the problem is, is that, did he get called at all last night? Honestly, I can't 100% remember. Ah! Yeah, but it's the inconsistency. Four, yeah. If if it is a fault, if he was getting called from day one, with his serve and his racket not being pointing in a downward direction, when well, fair enough. If he's played three matches already, and if he hasn't been called, I don't think he was. I'm trying to think. Yeah. But, uh, no, I don't remember oh. anything really. And I have to say that I feel the players nowadays have been coming higher and higher with their serves and flatter and flatter. And I'm really not surprised that an awful lot of them are getting called a fault nowadays. But you um, want consistency, don't you? But you want consistency. That's the whole point. Five, Some nice shot making in this rally. Jorgensen's getting a little frustrated with the work ethic of Tianmin Yuan. I think Yuan is particularly good with the round the head shot. Has such a low center of gravity as he moves to what should be his deep four, uh, backhand corner but he still plays with the normal overhead action. You see that a lot in the women's singles, but I think uh, he's so agile and so flexible. Well, there's a rare backhand. Seven, well, oh. have a three-point lead here. Had Jorgensen encouraging signs, but three points in a row for Nguyen. quite a bit in his young life. I thought actually a few years ago when he missed the World Championships, he might not actually play again. There's some heart issues. Hopefully he's overcome those.
possible lead and uh, the confidence Philip he required. Is it me or is it warm in here? It is very warm, very humid as well. But as I said at the start, I think these are two of the fittest athletes in the sport. So, you know, it, fitness will be tested, but I don't think that will be the deciding factor. One thing I, I think Jorgensen could nine. perhaps try, Play. I would say that 80% or maybe even more of his uh, shots to the back of the court are going down his opponent's backhand side. That deep backhand corner. I don't think he's really exploiting the deep forehand corner at all, and I think he ought to. Mm. Well he's had a couple of those in this game. Apology kind of rubs salt into the wounds, doesn't it, really? watching I mean, well I'm sure she is somewhere then if she's listening to us either but apparently he was saying that when he was little mum wasn't happy badminton not a good career choice son <laughs> he could be on the verge of a medal here turned out to be a pretty good career choice no oh, that's lovely what did, what did she want him to do then I don't know but doesn't get you don't get a good salary playing badminton his mum was talking to my parents, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All along the same lines. Yeah. You wouldn't swap it, would you? For the world? Not for the world. Well, oh. Having a dream and actually going for that dream, being able to chase the dream is the biggest gift of all. Of course, yeah. Whether you achieve it or not, it's the opportunity. Some pace here from Ewan. Pace of movement. Yeah, backhand again, deep backhand. Round again. Round again. sure a tactic that the coaches have given him because he's virtually not using Newen's deep forehand corner at all. So Newen's only having to co cover three quarters of the court at the moment. Here we go. aren't they really? to the forehand corner but it simply wasn't deep enough look where his feet are as he plays that new one it's not even near the double service line So 
Creeping into Newen. Well, you can understand it given the situation here. Jorgensen uh, keeps experiencing these three setters, and so far he keeps coming out on top. And he was he batted him pretty much, didn't he, Newen, in that first set, but. Two point advantage here now for the Dane. 15, Point, isn't it? Going for a while, yeah. This is a big, big point psychologically. Oh, out. Wide, yeah. You're right, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, that must have been at least 30 shots. And, uh, well, the difference, more than just the point, of course, it would have been 16, 14. And now it's 15 all. Go on, Jim, what are you going to say? There was a little look from Jan Jorgensen when Newham asked the umpire if he could tell down a quick timeout, and Jorgensen wasn't happy. Jorgensen may have lost the rally, but he felt that Newham was struggling at the end of it, and I think he's right. He wanted to play on again quickly. Which suggests if we go to a third set, Jorgensen could become favourite. Yes. If... If. Ah! In, uh, oh. It happens though. Nobody plays a loose shot like that on purpose. process from Tianmin Nguyen urging himself come on rally after rally inject a bit of pace get this over and done with in two straight huge effort by this man he is now three points away from the world championship semi-finals and that's well left by Jorgensen Right, you're pointing out it's 17, not 18. He's on four <laughs> points away. Whatever, it's within touching distance. Oh, my goodness. Well, we're back level pegging again. And he sees the initiative here, Jana Jorgensen. Thank you. 
one of those, isn't it? Oh, it's wide from Mewen and Jorgensen's back ahead again. 18, yeah, there's just a bit of frustration creeping into the game of Tianmin Yuan. Desperately going for the winner when he hadn't really got his opponent out of position. Say, did he take that before it came over the net? But no call. That's good. And it's game points for Yanni Jorgensen. And once again. Seen five points in a row taken into the brink of a deciding set. And there you go. There's a spring in his step now. Oh, he enjoyed that. And as we were suggesting, going to a third. Well, is he now the favourite? 21 points to 17. Some recovery from losing that first game. 21-8 and has Nguyen's best opportunity been and gone Part 120 seconds, part 120 seconds. Well, here we go then. Fresh shirts, fresh set, all still to play for. Medals on the line. Did it yesterday, didn't he? Against Bunsot Ponsana. Heavily lost the first set. 21 10 on that occasion. 21 8 today. And went on and won, Jan Jorgensen. He did it twice in 24 hours. because in the opening game just so many errors as you say the hitting long of the back line there's oh that's going to go long as well
missed it. Oh. It wasn't by much, but yes, it was a good call. Just wide here for Nguyen. Arthur when he played that overhead. Dane, really quite fortunate to get away with that point. Oh, tried to get out of the way. Two, three. Catch the top of his ponytail. Is that what you call it, or a bun? What's he got there? It's very trendy. I see if he doesn't wear it like that, of course. Does he have his hair down? Well, I don't know. They're not staying at our hotel, are they? No, they're not. I have seen him. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> I mean, he's been very, very patient in his play the second game. And, in fact, I was urging him to do that, to play himself into the match. But I haven't really seen... Jorgensen does have some very, very good winning shots, but I haven't really seen any today so far. No, no need to panic at the moment. It's 4 all, but I'm suggesting that if he's struggling from that far side of the court. Perhaps he ought to be a little more aggressive in his style. Okay. Four, four. Maybe he's just so confident that when it comes to the second half of this deciding game, he'll have the end he prefers playing from. Swinging, doesn't it? Right now, it's just gone swinging back towards Tian Min. Mm. And you see, that's the sort of shot that's alluding to just Five, a moment ago six. not full power attack but just clip the shuttle in a downward direction 
Those judgments like that are always to me a sign of nerves. Yeah, hoping it might go out. Yeah. Plateau clear deep to the forehand corner of Newen. feet are as he plays this. Not even on the double service line. You can always tell how deep a shuttle is towards the back of the court by where the player's feet are as they jump to play the shot. Make the most of it. And, uh, it's a lead, not a big one, but a lead nonetheless for in here. Shut it up. Agrees. Yeah, it's a good call by the line judge. I thought that was on the line. Well, they suggest that was the case. Yeah, so does that. That's superb. So the silver, 11, 8, interval. So three and points then. separate these two men, and there's uh, one last. Piece of action still to come in this quarter final of the men's singles. It's uh, Nguyen Tien Mint who is out in front, but you wouldn't want to call this match quite yet, would you? Oh, 
if I remember correctly, the Dame was 13-9 down in the deciding game yesterday against Boonsack Ponsana. So he's come from behind before in a deciding game. Over nine. Flashback there to yesterday. 9 13 down against Ponsana. As I said, he was pretty destroyed in the first game against the, the tie as well. through my mind, you know, that Jorgensen was just not being proactive enough. I know that he needs to be patient. He's probably playing to tactics that have been given to him by his coach, but I, I ju just went through my mind. At some point, you've got to take some initiative in the rally. I have to say, not out by uh, no, his foot being in the way a little bit, but maybe just out. But got to quickly put those things behind you, haven't you? Oh, well, back level, and you know, for all my concerns and saying Jorgensen's going to take a bit more initiative. Perhaps he's got it spot on. Working his opponent enough. And he snatched at that one. Ends a run of four points in a row for the Dane. Oh. I haven't seen the 
treated in the same way as we did with the earlier men's singles quarterfinal we watched with Lindan. poised isn't it uh, set for a thrilling finish here so much at stake that's nice from you and how courageous two rallies ago he missed a kill at the net went for it again made it this time attacking play from Jorgensen. is a huge point. Absolutely exhausted. Play on. There's no yeah. reason to stop apart from that. <laughs> You're shattered. Yeah. But you can't stop for being tired. Mm. Well, yeah. So good news from the uh, Jorgensen point, apart from the fact that Marion here is tired and he's trying everything now, change his shadow is. It was 17-15 in the last game. That's right. Six straight points to close it out. needed for Nguyen. Three points, his advantage. Great touch 
punishments. That's wide as well. Well, is there to be no fairy tale comeback today for Jano Jorgensen? Leave that is a match point. One save. Finish the margins again as it dribbles over the net hit. Jorgensen staying resilient for the moment. Fisher 
Nelson amongst them, cheering on their compatriot. He could taste the glory there. Tien Min Nguyen is absolutely drained. And now he still has one match point. That was incredible. Never say die. You've just seen it here. Now you've got to stay concentrated. Can he create a match point of his own, Jorgensen? That's going well. It's a four. It's a fifth match point. He can hardly stand up. He wants to have a wipe down. It's a bit harsh, okay, isn't it? But you want to make it the same for both players, I suppose. He is... Well, he's not a spent force, that's not quite true, but he is feeling it big time. And never mind the tension. Swan one way, and then the other. You just didn't know which way the pendulum would stop when the match was over. But in the end, it was Tien Min Nguyen who came up with the goods. And Jill, yeah, I say you have to feel for Jorgensen, but huge congratulations to Nguyen. Yes, and years and years and years of such hard work. And I remember him saying some time ago that success only comes to people who try their best every day. Well, if ever he tried his best, it was today. He fought and fought and fought. He was urging himself on. He was physically spent at the end of that third game. Emotionally, I think they're both probably totally drained. But of course, for Nguyen, he's got to pull himself together. He's got a semi-final tomorrow. And against someone called Lin Dan as yeah. well. Good luck. No, well, listen, if he shows half the courage here, he's shown this evening in the Tiana Gymnasium. He's got a chance. W what a match. Now seven minutes. The crowd laps it up. But it's Tien Min Nguyen who creates history for Vietnam with a medal guaranteed in a thrilling three-setter there against Jana Jorgensen. <laughs> Putting the uh, number one seed on Lee Chong Wei against Tsugiato of Indonesia. That's what's coming your way. 
。女士们、先生们，一号场地的比赛即将开始，请裁判员入场。Technical officials uh, just arrived, as you can see there in shot. Zhao Zhao Mao 